Hi, how do you prepare for petting inspections or for that matter any inspection on a ship? This is a question which I have been asking many senior officers around the world across companies and these are the typical answers that I get. I will check my PMS, I will check the documentation, I will check the cleanliness. Another answer which is very obvious but a little bit uncommon is that I will go through the VIQ. Is that enough? Imagine this, ship has had enough notice for a sire inspection, she arrives in port, the vetting inspector comes and goes on a round on deck with chief officer, points out something which chief officer has never come across before, he never thought about it before. It happens to us all, it happens on every ship. This may be a very silly observation but it is even more silly to explain why the ship could not point it out even though she had enough time. What if we have a system which can help me anticipate any observation which comes my way? What if this system also can reduce my preparation time? What if it keeps my vessel inspection ready at all times? What if it gives my junior officers the eye of an inspector so that I am not checking the ship by myself? Everyone on board is equipped to find out non-compliances. It is to answer these questions that I started on, this, on the journey of creating Guide to Inspections, the website which I'm going to talk about today. My name is Captain Devashish Basu. I have sailed for Wallam, Stena, Bahari, six years in command, and I have spent a huge amount of time researching the content of what I'm about to tell you now. There's a caveat to this. SIRE happens to be a very inclusive process and I am only going to talk about the ship's involvement in it. I am not qualified to talk beyond that. This is not only about SIRE, this process prepares you for PSC, annuals, Coast Guard, any kind of inspection that you can think about. There's one set of checks, once and for all you prepare the ship for any kind of inspection, on a tanker or on a non-tanker. Few of the questions I get a lot, is it a bunch of checklists? Why am I reinventing the wheel? What problem am I solving here? Why is this different? Let me answer these to, to the best of my abilities. There's a gap between what we need and what we have today in the industry. Most companies follow the VIQ based approach. That means checklists which are based on VIQ topics and they can get very detailed. What is the problem with that? Let's take a step back here. 5.16 of the VIQ deals with enclosed space entry. That means to comply with that point, I have to check my documentation, I have to check my training and I have to do physical checks like I have to go and check that the enclosed spaces are marked in place or not. The next point is 5.17 which is pump room entry. This again involves documentation, it again involves training and it again needs physical checks in the pump room. Do you really think that I'm going to go down to the pump room and check and then come back check my documentation and then check the training and then do the same thing once again for the next point? No, I'm not going to do that. So what does the chief officer do? He sits in front of the checklist and he thinks that he is compliant at that point of time. If he has a doubt, he makes a note. He's got to check it later. So he's basically creating another checklist which will make it easy for him to check. The VIQ is our Bible. There's no point undermining that. But let's face it, it's not very practically arranged. What can we do about that? Instead of looking at the ship as a complete entity, let us divide it into zones. I have divided the ship into 16 physical zones and created a set of checks for each zone. The foxhole is one zone, deck, pump room, engine room, accommodation, bridge, poop deck. Even documentation is divided into zones. Master's documentation, security officer's documentation. So the point is each zone has a set of checks. If you're going to check a certain area, let's say pump room, you're going to go to the pump room and check the pump room from every point of view, whether it comes from VIQ chapter six or chapter eight or chapter 11. Similarly, when you check the documentation, you're going to check your documentation regardless which chapter it is from. That's number one. Number two, why don't we divide the checks for each zone by time as well? A few years back, I had an observation because my chief officer forgot to switch on the IG recorder in the CCR. Inspector walked in, that's the first thing he saw, it wasn't switched on. We switched it on immediately, he could see it's running and yet he gave an observation. Your checklist has a point, is the IG recorder working? What exactly are you asking the chief officer when you ask him this question? First you're asking him whether it is working physically, which he can check one or two days before. You're also asking him whether he has switched it on at the time of inspection because if it is working and he hasn't switched it on, it is still an observation. How do I get around this problem? What I need to check 
can be broadly divided into three categories. There are certain checks that I need to do once and for all. I do this after I join and I set them aside. The lead of the SBM stopper, the bead weld on the bits, they're not going to go anywhere. I check them once and for all and get it out of the way. There are other checks which I have to do before arrival. Whether the extinguishers are signed, whether the chain blocks have their tags on them, whether my pump room gas alarm system is working fine, pressure of the SCB assets. These are not the checks which I can do once and for all. And this is one of the most underrated parts, part of an inspection preparation. On the day of arrival, I need to check a few things. Whether my guys are carrying security IDs, whether they're carrying gas meters, whether the VHF is set on one watt, you might think it's very obvious, but in the heat of the moment, the most experienced of us will forget. So certain checks fall under two categories. For example, the IG recorder. They have to be checked before, they have to be checked again on arrival. So how do we keep the ship inspection ready? I join the ship, I get rid of a set of checks which is once and for all. Before arrival, I have a set of checks which I have to do. On the day of arrival, I have a very, very minimal set of checks to do. I prefer to call them 11th hour checks. This is the checklist I use. It's a one page checklist. It takes any junior officer roughly one hour to check. Why am I calling it the most comprehensive process? Let me explain what research I did to create this. This is my work for two years. I have studied five company SMSs. I have gathered my experience from different companies and then what I did is I studied more than 20,000 observations around the world. These observations are not only SIRE observations, they are observations from flag state inspections, annuals. We are not going to prepare the ship separately for SIRE and any other inspection. We are going to prepare the ship once and for all with one set of checks divided practically for any inspection. This is what happens when you go to my website. You go to a certain zone. This page gives you various zones. You go to the zone that you want to, and then you go to a sub zone like the galley. You fill up your credentials. It gives you access to the set of checks which you need to do. If you think that there's an observation, it allows you to fill in with an image and description. Then you submit, and that's when it goes back to us and we collate the observations from the different parts of the ship and find out what has to be improved. These are still checklists. Now let us go beyond checklists. Let us see how we can empower the younger seafarers. This is Nino and Hussein. Nino was my third officer and Hussein was my cadet. The two of them have different challenges. Hussein is out of the academy and he's joined the ship for the first time. He doesn't know what he's looking for. Nino on the other hand, he was an OS and then an AB. He has struggled to be a third officer all his life. And finally he is a third officer now. But while he was struggling, what tools did he have to learn his job as a third officer? Now for both of them, we have books, we have checklists, and we have access to SMS manuals of the company, which again is a book. Is this the most productive way? Will this approach really get them to find interest in their jobs or to learn their jobs? What if we can give them an interactive game? Imagine a checklist which is turned into a game. This is how it works. For each and every zone, you have a interactive game. Keep swiping on your mobile or your laptop. I think you get the idea. Every question supported by a picture gives you a visual feedback and you will never forget, you will never misunderstand what the question demands. For each of these zones, we have such games already prepared. This is what Intertanko had to say about that. <coughs> There's another thing. Here's how the guidance from the shore management trickles down to the junior level. Shore management gives the guidance to the master and the department heads. They in turn trickles it down to the junior officers and the ratings and the cadets. So that is where they lie in the food chain. What if one of them have his own interest and the senior doesn't want to pass it on to him or the senior is too busy? I want to ask you this. What would you do if you want to make a sandwich and you don't know how to make a sandwich? What is it that you do? What you do is the same thing, thing that he would do and all of us would do that. You will Google it. This is what you get when you Google SIRE preparation. There is no practical guidance on Google. He is not going to find anything. So Hussein and Nino is left with books, checklists and SMS. There's another thing that you do when you want to find out something. YouTube happens to be the second largest search engine in the world. Half the YouTube searches are people trying to find out something they haven't done before. And one thing which I found especially interesting is that 
the average attention span of a YouTube viewer is 4.4 minutes, 4 minutes and 20 seconds to be pre precise. So we have on one hand the attention span of four and a half minutes for a millennial seafarer. And what tools are we giving them? I give you the world's first virtual tour guide for vessel inspections. What I've done is each checklist has been converted into a short video tutorial, not more than six minutes, not less than two and a half minutes. It covers all the essential points. It gives you the confidence that uh, it can be checked comprehensively in a short amount of time if you know what to look for. Let's take a look. We're going to go for a round of the steering flat. It's going to take just four minutes entering the steering flat. Check the door is in order. Any elevation changes are highlighted. There should be required signages put up in the door. This is the emergency escape trunk between the two doors of the steering flat. The manila rope is in good condition. Blocks are okay. Illumination is satisfactory. 12 zones, 43 videos, none of them more than six minutes. They are between two and a half to six minutes to be precise at an average of four and a half minutes, which is the ideal attention span of an average viewer. How does this help? A millennial seafarer who wants to inspect a lifeboat would find it much more interesting to watch a four minute video on a lifeboat and that will tell him each and every nook and corner of the lifeboat what all things he has to check and he'll be happy and confident to walk into the lifeboat after that. This has been tried and tested in many ways. This is what Videotel, managing director of Videotel, Mr. Ral Harris had to say about it. Humbled by that. What else do I offer? I offer specific guidance of US Coast Guard. I'm quite proud of the uh, web page, which is on US Coast Guard. It's a free web page. It's open access. So go through it. And there is nothing that will give you more confidence about a US Coast Guard inspection than this web page. There are specific guidance on annuals with flag state rules. And then there is a training module, which is entirely VIQ based. With the VIQ 7, there is a lot of emphasis on training of officers and crew. Inspectors can start asking questions and they have started asking questions. This module is going to prepare you for inspection questions. Common questions which the inspectors can throw at you based on VIQ 7 and it, it gives you references. Well, it's not about the testimonials. It's not about my personal success. This is what I created. We live in a profession where the relationships end at the gangway. When I get calls from cadets and uh, junior officers telling me after years how the process has helped them, that is what I have created. Now, can you get this developed in-house? Of course you can. I'll tell you what you need. You need a sailing master. The reason is, whatever is packed in this program can only be developed by a sailing master because there's a lot of practical approaches involved which you can only figure out while you are creating it on board and while you are following it on board and you keep correcting for it for your mistakes so that you get a comprehensive robust process. Also all the web designing in this website is done by me but it is customized to what we need, how the checklists are designed, how what kind of interface you need when you're filling them up. So you need a sailing master with a little bit of web design concept and then you need someone who's really, really interested in the job. And this person then has to give you about two years of his time, give or take. Um, and why would you do that? This is a finished product. You can always get it from me. Ships have started having open access to the internet, which is a big difference. It's going to revolutionize the way we look at inspections. It's probably going to bring a lot of inspections ashore. We can do that now. And I'm absolutely confident that if we give our seafarers, our juniors especially the juniors the eye of an inspector you can rely on your junior officers and your entire ship's team will grow up organically thank you